Hey everybody, Noah here with Learn Meta Analysis, and as I have been working a ton lately and not able to make a lot of new videos, I started thinking about what am I actually using to save time? And what I realized is I have become a lot more efficient since I started using browser extensions. And I know that you guys are probably like, oh, everybody uses browser extensions. Well, I am not one of those people. For a long time, I did not use browser extensions, but there are a few that have grown on me and I now feel that they help me save tons of time regardless of what I'm doing in academia land. So let me show you the five that I have that are my favorite right now. And we're gonna go from the ones that I use the least to the ones that I use the most. And I think that the one that I use the most is actually going to surprise you because as I was putting together this list, it definitely surprised me. All right, so we're gonna start with one that's pretty obvious and you probably already have right now, which is the Google Scholar button. You can get this from all the examples I'm gonna show you are in the Chrome store. Uh, I personally don't prefer Chrome. I prefer Firefox and have for a long time. Uh, we can get into the you know why I prefer different browsers and all those things in some other video. Um, but I'm showing you all these examples in Chrome. So let's see the Google Scholar button. It's this little guy up here. We click that. Why is this useful? Well, if I'm working on a paper and or reading about something in general and I find something, uh, let's say I want to read about uh, robust variance estimation and meta-analysis, robust variance estimation, meta-analysis, right? I just click OK and here we go. Now we have all these things right here. Like I said, you guys probably know about this one already, but the reason that I really like this is I used to just always open a new tab and I know it seems like really fast. You just open a new tab, you type in scholar.google.com, you type in your information and you pull it up. The reality of that situation is you might lose, let's say five to 10 seconds each time you do that. And I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but as you know, when you are deep into reading about stuff and you're opening up all these different papers and skimming, this adds up to a substantial amount of time. All those five to 10 seconds at a time really add up with one another. So I found that this did save me some time. That said, I don't use this every day. The Honestly, the way that I find that I actually use this most is when I just need a citation real quickly. So I'll find, I typically know the article name or something close enough to bring it up and I'll click cite and here's my information here. Okay, so that gets us through Google Scholar button. Next. Zotero, my good friend Zotero. I am using Zotero more and more and more as time goes on. And I actually, I think I mentioned this previously in a video, um, but I haven't done like a full deep dive on why I love Zotero so much yet. But I'm starting to use it as one of my primary PDF readers for academic stuff. Um, and so I'll, I'll get into that in a whole nother video so I don't ramble. But the reason I love the Zotero button is literally the simplicity of things, okay? So you get this from Zotero.org, but let me uh, show you, oh, here I am, bad habits, right? I'm like scholar.google.com. So uh, let's say we wanna find, we'll just look for same thing, robust variance estimation. Uh, and we'll open up this article. I like this article. It's a good one, at least I think it's a good one. So, okay, so we pull up this article here and we wanna save it. All we have to do is one click, okay? We literally one click, it saves it into whatever um, thing that we want it to and we're good to go. And it's saying there's an error, but it's because I don't have Zotero running right now. But when you have Zotero running, it'll save this. If it can grab the PDF for you, it's gonna save that too and it throws it right into whichever library you want. Absolutely love this button, has saved me a ton of time. All right, the reason that's ranked number four is because I don't write papers every day. Similar to you, I probably I don't write papers every day. You probably don't write papers every day. I actually don't know anyone who writes papers every day, but when I am writing papers, I find it really helpful. Next up, perplexity. So I mentioned perplexity in a previous video and why it's my current current favorite large language model. Um, it still is, for what it's worth. You know, we're two, three weeks later now, I think, after posting that video, and I still do really, really, really like perplexity. So why do I like perplexity so much? The reason is because I often come up with academic questions as I'm working on things or thinking about things. And yes, you can go through uh, whatever your preferred search engine is, but I found that perplexity saves me a lot of time. So let's say I wanna know again about robust variance estimation. Can you point me to some academic papers about robust variance estimation? And it'll send us some papers and some brief descriptions. Now, I will say, this is not always right, right? Large language models can make things up. So it's very important that you actually make sure that the information this is giving you is correct. Like I never just go off of what any of these large language models tell me. If I'm working on anything academic, I always come back and say, okay, well, let's find out 
you know more about this paper. So let's go to this one here, and what we can do is we can just click the link, and it's going to automatically bring us to the article. And then of course, if we want to save this into Zotero, bam, we just click our Zotero button, and it's saved. So I really find that the perplexity helps me a lot in terms of saving time that way. Uh, let's ask another question. So another question I might ask is, um, can you point me to some research? Oh, well, we just did a can you point me to. So let's ask instead, uh, can you explain robust variance estimation in meta-analysis? So you could read a whole bunch of different papers trying to understand robust variance estimation, or you could ask perplexity button to explain it to you. And the reason I like using this as opposed to some of the other large language models is it gives me the sources and I can just click and go straight there and I don't need to actually go to the perplexity website to do this. The other nice thing is I'm going to refresh my page here. You can see it automatically saves these to your library after you do it. So uh, as another example of something I asked earlier, I was really curious how some of these pop-up blockers work because when pop-ups don't come up, um, I'm like, okay, is it accepting the cookies? Is it blocking the cookies? What is it doing? And it gave me a really nice answer to this. So I still really like perplexity. I will continue using it for quite a while, to be honest. I haven't found anything that I like more than it yet. So, all right, let's move forward. My second favorite, Bitwarden. I was a very, very, very slow adopter of password managers. I had all these crazy passwords saved in all these different places and it drove me crazy. I would take so much time. So as you probably know, working in academia land like I do, you probably have logins for 8 million different things, right? Like, I mean, not literally 8 million, but you might have 100. You might have 150. Every single journal is probably going to ask you to have a login. And a lot of times they use the same thing. So it might be like editorial manager, but you'll have like seven different journals that use editorial manager. This got really difficult for me to have strong passwords and also keep track of them all. So I did finally cave and start using a password manager. I really like Bitwarden. Bitwarden is... I'm not, I'm not going to go on and on about it. I will let you do your own research. Um, I ended up selecting Bitwarden over some of the other options that are available. I use the free tier. I absolutely love that it's got a browser extension. I absolutely love that I can use it on my phone, on my uh, tablet, on my computer. I, I like all of those things. That is the primary reason that I like it more than the password managers built into the browsers themselves is I can use Bitwarden across Chrome, I can use it across Firefox, and like I said, I can use it on my phone and my tablet as well, all with one account. Um, I really, really like it. I've been using it for probably about a year. Huge fan, saves me a ton of time. Now let's talk about my absolute favorite, okay? This is probably gonna be surprising to you. It was surprising to me as I was compiling this list. My absolute favorite is uBlock Origin. uBlock Origin is a pop-up blocker, okay? so. It has essentially revolutionized the internet to me in the sense of it brings the internet back to how I remember the internet being when I first started using the internet, right? So you remember back in the day, you might not if you're a younger person, but if you're an older person, you may remember back in the day when you could surf the internet and there weren't pop-ups everywhere, right? There were no pop-ups at all. Instead, it would just go to the website. So now anytime I would go to, like before I got uBlock Origin, anytime I go to read a journal article, there's a pop-up about cookies on every single page. Doesn't matter if I already put in there that I wanted to block them or I only wanted the necessary ones, it was still there every single time and I had to click it and it was so annoying. Then I also like to do research about different things and uh, one of like, and I mean for my personal life, like for creating this YouTube channel, working more efficiently, I really like to watch YouTube videos to learn from other people about their experiences using these different tools. Well, if you do that like I do, you probably get really annoyed by YouTube video advertisements. I can't stand them. Guess what? uBlock Origin blocks ads on YouTube. It is awesome for that reason. So. This has saved me a ton of time. It's something I use every single day. I don't even know that I'm using it because it just runs in the background. And you can actually see it up here in the top right. You can see it's blocked uh, six things on here. But if you leave, uh, let's say you get to a website where it's not working properly, right? Like you are running uBlock Origin, it's not working properly. One of the things I absolutely love is you can just turn it off. You just push the button to turn off uBlock Origin. Then you can refresh the page and it's gonna work just like it would normally with all the ads, with all the pop-ups, blah, blah, blah. And then when you're done, you just click it back on. Okay, so I really enjoy uBlock Origin. It has saved me a ton of time. Now, you're probably wondering, why do I have their website pulled up? 
not the Chrome store, not the Firefox store, etc. Well, there's a couple reasons. One of them is there's some other things out there that are called uBlock that are not the same. Okay, so you need to be really careful about which one you download. I am using uBlock Origin. So I have this Firefox uh, page pulled up here. I know I'm on Chrome right now, but the reason I wanted to show you, the original uBlock Origin, to my understanding, was created by Raymond Hill. So what you'll see is it's by Raymond Hill. Second, look at the number of users. Okay, this one has 8 million on Firefox, on Chrome, it, uh, the number I think is substantially larger. Um, but as you will see here, um, I, I scrolled down on the main page. If you are a Chrome user, uBlock Origin in the future may not work as well. So I'm not going to go through all this this reasoning why. I will leave this for you to read. But it is one of the many, many, many reasons why I prefer Firefox. I have preferred Firefox for a very long time. And like I said, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to get into why I use Chrome. I, I use Chrome sometimes. I use I use Chrome for some things. I use Firefox for a bunch of other things. But regardless, um, uBlock Origin is currently still available on Chrome. And it is currently available in Firefox and a bunch of other different browsers. I absolutely love it. It saves me time every single day for I, I would guess probably 80% of the websites that I go on would have some sort of cookie pop up. Where you, and I am so glad that one of my friends told me about this, especially if you're somebody who searches YouTube a lot. If you're watching a lot of YouTube videos to learn things, getting rid of those ads is game changing. At least for me, it was game changing because I literally can't remember a single YouTube ad that ever changed my life in any meaningful way. So the ability to not watch YouTube ads has been awesome. Instead, they're just gone. You just watch the 10 minute video. You watch the five minute video. You watch the hour long video. No ads, no, no interruptions, no nothing. uBlock Origin is my absolute favorite game changing thing I have found. And I am very thankful to my friend Aaron. Shout out to him for telling me about it when I was complaining because <laughs> I, was, I was texting him one day and I was like, dude, I have wasted so much time on YouTube ads. I'm trying to learn how to do coding. Uh, like I'm trying to learn some Python and I'm watching these really long videos and it seems like every five minutes or every 10 minutes I gotta watch two or three minutes worth of ads. And he's like, really? You block origin has been around forever. Why don't you use that? I'm like, because I've never heard of it before. <laughs> and so you block origin is an absolute game changer. Um, I really have enjoyed it so far. So if you're somebody who gets bogged down by YouTube ads when you're trying to learn stuff, or you get really annoyed by all of the pop-ups on websites that you have to click and set up your cookie settings every single time, you might want to look into this, okay? It's open source. You can read the source code if you know how to do that. Um, there's tons of information about uBlock Origin on the internet. It's been around for quite a while. So that said, I'm going to wrap up. Um, please help support the channel, guys. Like the video. Uh, please feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be back to doing more meta-analysis walkthroughs in R and with simple meta-analysis soon. My schedule is loosening back up. I'm going to have some more time probably after the end of this week, so I'm really excited about that. Um, the other thing that I will mention is I don't know what I don't know. Right? If you have favorite extensions for Chrome, for Firefox, for whatever, please let me know in the comments what has been game changing for you because in academic life, we are all struggling for time, always. At least everyone I've met is always struggling for time, always. Right, So anything that we have that can save us some time, save us some energy, please do share it down in the comments because I would love to find more of these different browser extensions. So that said, thank you guys. I hope you have a great weekend.